Hello, everyone. This is Data Talks presented by Dun & Bradstreet. I'm your host, George LaRue. I'm a principal consultant for data strategy in the advisory services group here at Dun & Bradstreet. In advisory services, our team is dedicated to helping our clients to maximize the value of their relationship with Dun & Bradstreet through expert advice and consultation. And on Data Talks, I chat every episode with one of the expert advisors at Dun & Bradstreet about a topic that can help consumers of our data and services to get more value. Today's guest expert is Howard Poppel, a solution design consultant at Dun & Bradstreet. Howard, how long have you been with the company? Uh, I've been here 21 years and 13 of them in technical advisory services. And can you tell me a little bit about what it is that you do in your role as a solution design consultant? Well, the uh, solution design consulting team, we're technical advisors and we do post-sale technical consulting, um, mostly specializing in integration and automation of DMB tools and data uh, within our customers' ecosystems. Thanks, Howard. I think our topic today is really relevant for a lot of the data practitioners that are out there, and that's how to choose the right MDM application. I mean, let's face it, right? There's a ton of different software packages out there. How is one supposed to figure out what's right for them? Well, I think they first have to figure out um, what they're trying to accomplish. What is it? What is their point of arrival? Um, because every package is different. Um, and once they understand what that point of arrival is, then they can start. They need to start then breaking that down into the different components of what's important to them. So whether it's alternative hierarchies, operational hierarchies, multilingual functionality, global access, um, in-product entity identification, they need to understand what what really are the needs, and then that'll help them to determine what's the right package for them. So just then you mentioned a few of them, like alternative hierarchies, uh, multilingual functionality. Um, are those the most common functional needs that we hear clients saying that they need? Are there others? Yeah, there's a few others, but the, the most important and one of the main reasons why we see our customers uh, purchasing MDM packages are for those operational hierarchies. So when we're talking about that, we mean things like sales hierarchies, geography hierarchies, territory hierarchies. DMB can provide the st standard levels of hierarchy. So we can do standard corporate hierarchy, alternative linkage, minority linkage. Um, but a lot of these customers need operational views, and that's really where MDM comes into play because they can then separate and slice and dice the data and provide it into those operational views, um, you know, taking our data. Um, also, we're also looking for, um, a lot of customers are looking to be able to rationalize data from disparate sources. So whether you've got two, a hundred different sources, what they're trying to do is find out what data is um, across the organization um, and, and where is it duplicative. Um, and then, then MDM helps to solve that. So when we're looking at how to choose, I imagine that these types of functional factors, the ones that you've mentioned just now, are important, but also its ability to really handle the volume. If you've got 200 sources and they're all small, that might be one thing. But if you've got five sources and they're all massive, it might be a completely different calculation. Is volume something that comes into play when you're looking to evaluate MDM offerings? Absolutely. Um, the two things on that in that aspect are volume and throughput, because it's not just how many records or how much data you want to push the system, but what kind of speed do you need? Um, with some customers, the the just the ability to rationalize data in days is, is sufficient. In others, they want to do sub second response. They want to know immediately, and they need to clean their data for that. So that that's your throughput: is how much data can we consume uh, in what period of time? But then the amount of data and also the number of different source systems because keep in mind no two data sources are ever alike so when you're looking at disparate data sources across an organization um, the more you have obviously the more technology you're going to need and the more complex the process is going to be because it has to account for all of those different nuances from each of those systems so do the distinctions between sort of on-premises software and cloud-based software do those play into it as well or mobile accessible and like you were talking about before, the multilingual capabilities? How should people be assessing each of those in terms of their importance to the overall decision? Well, we're starting to see it. 
and going across the spectrum that that on premises is, is minimizing it's it's a lot more cloud based solutions a lot of our customers are really everything's moving to the cloud but there are that there is that need for uh, on premise and we see that a lot more in the financial services industry where security really becomes a, a, a priority they need to keep everything behind their firewall so we're seeing them uh, lean towards more of those on prem but for the most part a lot of our customers are really going uh, cloud based um, and they really, um, you know, and they really need the security of working with cloud-based systems, but also um, they need to know that they have connectivity, whether, again, it's mobile, whether, and from any region across the globe. Um, being an international or global corporation like Dun & Bradstreet, and we're delivering data across the globe, the, our clients could be anywhere. And they, and I mean that not just from their position as a company, but at their position as their employees. I, I've done work personally in multiple countries around the world, reaching out to the DMB database to get that information. So that has to be accessible. Talking about Dun & Bradstreet, here we often talk about the importance of really understanding your data before you try and put together a technology stack. Now, are there particular considerations around data that you feel like you need to consider when you're assessing your software options? Is data the first thing that you need to think about or is there something even before that? Well, right before you decide what data you need, you've got to, again, it goes back to what I had said previously. You really have to focus on what is the use case. Um, a lot of times, you know, our customers come to us with an MDM uh, problem or, or uh, opportunity, and it's really based in the sales and marketing space. But keep in mind today, uh, 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 master data management really goes across all spectrums of data, whether you're doing finance analytics, whether you're looking at your supply chain across the globe, or whether you're using it for uh, sales and marketing purposes. Um, it, the first thing you need to do is what is that use case? Then once you've got the use case, now you start looking at the data because what data do I need? What data do I have? And what is the integrity of that information? Because again, that I, as I mentioned previously, when you've got disparate data sources and different levels of completeness or accuracy of information, that your data, uh, your MDM software has to be able to manage that. Then the last piece, and that, and again, like I was saying just previously, was when you start looking at data enrichment. Do you need finance data? Do you need diversity information or compliance information? Do you need sales and marketing? Do you need URLs, IP addresses? All of that different it, different information all correlates back to what was that original use case, and then quality of the input, and then quality of the enrichment. And you, you mentioned that there too, kind of that integrating the different sources, um, and and that's what a lot of the MDM software is really trying to get you to, is this idea of a, a golden record. Are there different ways that these MDM providers are building these golden records or allowing you to sort of integrate toward a golden record that you need to take into consideration that might be different and might get you different results in the end? Well, a lot of them are using the same type of processes to get you to that point of arrival. A golden record should be... Uh, the same across every organization, but it's not because it, again, it depends on the you know the the uh, input data, and then what data are you matching it up against? You know, a lot of these. Keep in mind, MDM is really a tool to get you to a point of arrival, but these guys, these companies don't offer the in information that DMB is uh, offering. So when you're trying to get to that golden record, you have to look at first party data, which is the customer's data. You have to look at second party data, and then you've got to look at that third party data and that third party data again us um, when you bring them all together then you can get that you can get yourself to that point of arrival which is finding out what is that best record now a lot of different MDMs do it slightly different but at the end of the day they are trying to get you to uh, they're trying to get you to the same point of arrival now a lot of the providers have packages that come preloaded with like predefined logical models. They cover a variety of different domains. In what you've seen, in your experience, do these end up being helpful? Is that something that can help differentiate between different products, different packages? They're helpful as a template. You know, you have to start somewhere. Um, and it's much easier to start with that template and then bring that use case in and then make those configuration changes. Um, I, you know, doing this for 20 years, I've never seen two customers' data look exactly the same. So there shouldn't be just one 
process for everybody and that makes sense and i and a lot of these vendors know that so what they do is they make their situ- they'll, they'll they'll provide you with the template get you started but give you a toolkit or a toolbox so that you can do configurations based on your needs um again you brought it up just a minute ago multilingual um are we dealing with diacritic characters are we dealing with double byte characters are we dealing with you know how is the data um, how is the data provided? Is it name first, address second? And, you know, it, all of that needs to come into play. Are you using ISO standards? Are you using FIP standards? So when you look at all of the the information that's available, um, you've got to really, uh, you've got to look at what customizations are available, but those templates will get us the starting ground, but they should never be looked at as the end all be all to get you to your point of arrival. Well, I'll tell you, Howard, as a guy who has an apostrophe in his last name, you're talking about diacritic characters. I'm just thinking, can they handle apostrophes right? Um, another thing that you need to think about, though, anytime you're bringing on a new software package is, is resources. And are these packages that these MDM providers offer, are they going to require specialized resources generally? A lot of the MDM providers um, have a uh, package that comes with it where they'll at least get you implemented. But yes, absolutely. Every every MDM's process that I've ever worked on, you need to have resources really in three different areas. Number one, you've got to have it at the customer base. They need to be able to provide a project manager. They need to be able to provide DBAs. They need to be able to provide reporting uh, people. Um, in the old days, it was easy. We would deliver a flat file of data. You'd have a DBA massage it in Excel or some other a simple program and they spit out here's the answers but today things have so much more complex and it's so much better because we can really dig into the data so the at the customer level you need all of those different resources to really get you to your point of arrival then second you need the software provider to have their uh, provision they need to be able to provide the training and technologies and support at the application level. And then last but not least is where DMB comes into play at the data level. We're gonna help, we're gonna work with the the uh, hardware and software providers, but we also need to be able to explain how the data fits into those structures. What should the, the canonical models be? Where should the where does the data update structures? All of that gets really important. And that's why it's important to have resources on all three levels. So we've been talking for a while now and we've gone over a lot. And now there's probably some people out there watching this or listening to this and that are asking the question, can you do this without enterprise data management software? That's a great question, George. And and to be honest, it depends on the uh, two things. Number one is what's your point of arrival? So what are you trying to accomplish? And then uh, what we found, what I found in my experience and t- working with my team is um, it also depends on the size of the organization and the size of the engagement. I've seen very successful engagements with not without using uh, master data management software, but bringing it into a data lake, a data warehouse, or even a CRM. But keep in mind, those are kind of more outliers a lot of the big companies they have to have this software because it really does the job for them but when you're a smaller organization or you have a smaller footprint and you really just need to be able to um again um uh, uh dedupe across different you know two different data sources and then provide external data onto it that's not uh, uh, overly technically complex so that's where you might want to look at again like a data warehouse or a data lake to hand, to manage that kind of process so the short answer is yeah it does it, it's necessary to have it but the longer answer is that it really depends on the use case and the size of the organization to make that decision so howard as we start to wrap up what's one thing that you'd want someone who's watching this or listening to this to walk away with having learned um, they have to understand one thing, and I, and I think if you're going to get anything out of this video and, and out of this uh, conversation that we're having is that enterprise data and, ma- and master data management itself, it, it's not a project. It's a process. It's a journey. Um, you've got to have that starting ground. You're going to have then the implementation. But what a lot of companies fail on, and that's why we as consultants work with them closely, is also understanding the, the most important part, and that's keeping the and that's the maintenance or monitoring strategy. Once you get the data in there, if you don't do anything with it, then all you have is an expensive Rolodex. But if you have that maintenance strategy in there, then you've got the uh, you've got the technology in place that will get you guys uh, well to keep the data clean and keep it actionable because that's also important. And and we I know we haven't touched on that, but I want to finish with that. And that is. Um, 
at the end of the day, master data management is really, it, nobody does master data management just to master their data. There has to be an end game. And that's make the data actionable and useful regardless of what area of the organization is asking for it. Well, thank you, Howard, so much for joining me and sharing some of your expertise on this. Thanks, George. I appreciate being here today. Our guest expert today has been Howard Popple, a solution design consultant at Dun & Bradstreet, and this is Data Talks. I hope you've enjoyed today's discussion, and if you have, I encourage you to share it with a friend or a colleague. If you would like more information about what we discussed on today's episode, visit www.dnb.com or talk to your company's Dun & Bradstreet specialist today. I'm George LaRue. Thanks for joining us. Until next time.